What's up, guys? On this episode, we're going to be covering how to start socializing a dog that's not good with other dogs. We have this guy a little bit further along. We're going to be introducing a brand new dog that we have never socialized yet, brand new to our board and train program. We're going to be covering a little bit about that viral video and breed-specific exercises, the value of them, what you try to do, what you try not to do, a little bit more on episode 14 of Dog Behavior Question Tuesday. All right, I'm just gonna start the episode. Um, I'm gonna place these guys and then we'll start the episode, all right? Brody, place. Good. Sit. Down. Good. Um, get this guy over here. Mickey, place. Or oh, actually, yep. Down. Good. Seamus, let's go, bud. Good boy. Come on, buddy. Down. Down. So go. Come here. Place. Down. Good. Samson. Do I have a, oh yeah, bench. Good boy. Down. And now the trickiest one of all, touches. Come on, girl. Come on, girlfriend. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Good girl. Place. Down. Nope. Down. Down. This is my mistake, actually, for not solidifying a down a little bit better. I'm actually going to, I got to follow through. You should not be repeating. So it's actually a bad, setting a bad influence here. There we go. Leash pressure. She actually knows a little bit better. Um, that's all right, we'll get everything else good. Looks like we're in good shape. Got the mongrels hanging out. You'll notice there are two dogs specifically that are on leash. We have Brody, we have Duchess. That's because I'm anticipating that at some point throughout this, they will be um, messing up, not a setback. It's actually opportunity for um, me to show them what they should be doing. I'm gonna grab my tea real quick. So. Feeling a little bit better, actually a lot better. I'm getting some congestion up, but it's all clear. And um, I feel better. I had a hockey game last night. We won 7-4, destroyed him. I was talking a lot of trash, a lot of trash, and it felt good. Um, hey, down. So for those of you that don't know me, that, that's what I do. I'm very, I'm very patient. I'm very polite. Um, in the business world, working with dogs and stuff, a lot of patience. You see me out there playing hockey, um, that's my time to, to get a little dirty and, um, and be a little bit of a jerk, even, even more than the people that already think I'm a jerk. That's my time to kind of let it out. I'm a very competitive person. That's how I was born, born and raised. That's, that's why and where I am. That's the reason why, the reason where I am today is because of my competitive nature, which has its pros and cons. But anyway, we're gonna jump right into this. We are a day late, sorry about that. Um, sh should I talk about that video or? Yeah. We'll, we'll jump, I guess we'll jump right into that video. Um, I, guess, I guess it's safe to say that that's a viral video, right? Yeah. It, by our standards, I mean, there's some people that get more, more views than that, but it, it hit, it hit 50,000, um, 50, 50K or 48K or something like that um, views, like over 400 shares. Uh, it was, Definitely um, a topic for people to love and hate. Overall, I, I think the one misconception or, or the one thing that people started to do when they started to run with it and take it and share and like and dislike and all that stuff is that they made it about, they made it about this method versus that method. And even in my YouTube video, all, all that I said was real world dog training versus leap of faith because I, I'm not labeling whatever that type of training was as anything. All that I know is that it was crappy training and the video, 
The video is hysterical. It, it's not about making fun of the lady or anything, even though she's a very rude person. Um, it, it's really just pointing out the fact that like the timing for when I said what I said and what actually happened happened, that's pure comedy, that, that, that's pure gold right there. Um, as far as like the methods go, the problem that I have, this guy's goofing off over here, the problem that I have is that people made it about this versus that, and I'm gonna be the first to say, listen, I see positive reinforcement training that is just absolutely laughable. I see, what do, what do you call the other side of training? Like a, aversive correction training, or? I, I guess like I, I see old school training um, every day here in New York City and especially on like videos and Facebook that makes me want to cringe. You know what I mean? And, and, and I also see the new trend which is quotes, balance training um, and some people are horrible. They, they, use, they use food, they use this, they use corrections and they suck as a trainer. So like I wasn't trying to take sides as like a trainer. I was just saying whatever they were doing was, not, was just flat out not working and what I was happened to doing uh, happened to be doing was just showcasing my work. That wasn't the point of the video. I was actually waiting across the street um, for a client who was across the street. Our training center was across the street. I saw her down the block. I saw the body language, state of mind, and all that. And I was like, ooh, got as close to the sidewalk as I could. She kept coming. And I know she wanted to set my dogs off so she could blame it on my tools and methods that weren't working. That backfired. And as a result, some people laughed and some people hated me, said I was a jerk. I was just waiting across the street. But anyway, that's just clearing that up. You guys get what you can from it. It's too much for me to keep up. I, I, I try not to get involved. Uh, but anyway, we'll go right into this stuff. So, uh, Adoki Kennels? Yeah, Adoki Kennels. Blake, I have a pure chow who is great with some dogs and others not so great. He was worse before, but I got him to loosen up a little, but still not to where I want him to be. On a daily basis, we walk between four and seven kilometers. We do obedience daily. He does not pull on the leash. He's, per he's not permitted on any furniture. Um, this includes the bed as well. He's fed in designated areas when he receives his food after our walks. I recently started to bring him to the park, the dog park, but I've kept him on the leash for preventative measures. When he meets dogs there, I make sure that the leash is loose. I don't feel safe taking him off leash because, I don't, not because I don't trust him, but because I don't trust the, others, the other owners there. I believe dogs are great with their instincts and know how to play their roles. From, a train, from one trainer to another, knowing that Chows are notoriously known to be independent <clears throat> and not so good with other dogs, what would you suggest? I'm looking to break that though, looking to break, I, I guess, that Chows are not good with other dogs, almost there, just need some insight or outside insight. Any suggestions, cheers from Adoki Kennels. Um, wow, it's a great question. I think, I think there's a, a lot of different ways and directions we can go with this. Thanks, man. Um, but overall, the breed is just a little bit of a blueprint saying what they were originally designed for. We don't have those jobs today. And, and I, I don't want to say, because we've, we've had some success with, with, with chows being um, social. We, we don't see a lot of chows. But um, I will go ahead and say that chows tend to be kind of like a one person type of dog, like, you know, for, and, and that's what makes them um, not so good with other dogs because I don't think they get a lot of exposure. So when you're dealing with, with this dog, really, it's the same as any other dog. I'm gonna treat it the same way. Um, you're in a rough situation trying to go to a dog park. I can tell you right now, um, my guy Soko, if I go and I bring him to a park when he's used to a bunch of like, respectful dogs, when you're around respectful people um, and you finally encounter that rude person, they stand out and annoy you that much more, right? When you're around it regularly, sometimes like you learn how to cope with it. Hey, um, so the same can be said with him. Sometimes when dogs are too pushy, you can be like, whoa, I don't, listen, I wanna, I wanna be friends with you, I wanna play, but you're coming way too strong. So in your situation, I would look to do a couple things. One. Find some dogs that you actually know or owners that you know that you can talk and work through. Find a space that might be outside a dog run or a quieter dog run. And um, everything starts in small doses. Socialization in general, socialization starts on leash with you being able to walk with a pack of other dogs or with your friends who have other dogs and have the dogs that you're around not interested in one another. 
right? If you can't do that and you're not successful doing that, then we're not ready to be at the off-leash phase or in a position where my dog's on leash and all the other crazy dogs, hey, all the other crazy dogs are actually um, off-leash running around. It's almost not fair, right? Um, what I would, I would try to do that. If you could, if there's any like large field socialization or socialization class in the area, or maybe you can start it, we do socialization classes here in this small room actually, and it all starts with everybody on leash. A lot of them are friendly, a lot of them are not friendly, and they have intentions other than focusing on the, on the owner. And what ends up happening is we say, get that attention where they don't care about what's happening, stay in movement. As a, as a, a handler or a dog owner, whatever, you kinda wanna stay in movement. You want your recall to be solid, right? You want to start to shape a, a default choice or a default habit that when a dog feels nervous, if he needs help, he can get the recall and actually be called out, or he knows to walk away instead of kind of engage. If a dog's being a little pushy, that's our job to advocate and set that other dog in its place before he has to. You know, putting your dog in a situation where it feels more comfortable when you're around is step one, and that starts with walking. Um, we might get into some socialization with a dog that we've never socialized before. I also posted a video on, I think it's on my, my personal Facebook page. It, no, it's, it's on the company Facebook page, Dream Come True Canine, with Brody when we just started doing socialization exercises. It was with calm dogs working on let's go, which is a loose form of recall. Feeling, getting let's go soft leash pressure, getting let's go soft remote collar pressure, and doing that and doing that to the point where we were more relevant. And the habit changed the state of mind. He went from, oh, what are these dogs about? What are these dogs about? To all of a sudden, just walking, drinking water, smelling some dogs, catching up to me because I stayed in movement. That's more of what you need to be doing, right? Um, and hopefully when you see that video, it, it'll help. I actually made that for um, uh, a friend, Hugh, who I recently did a Skype session. He's in Hong Kong, and he's kind of having the same issues. So um, that's what we did there. Hopefully that helps. Forget the breed. In this situation, doesn't matter. All dogs can be social, right? Um, let's see where we are. High five for, can, uh, for canines, what's up? Hi Blake, I thought I ran out of questions, but I have one more. How important is it to provide breed specific activities for a dog? Some dogs like my pup have high prey drive or herd drive, which is one reason behavior issues can be hard to tackle. Are there any ways to manipulate the drive to keep their focus and create loyal, obedient, uh, a loyal and obedient dog? I think that's a great question. Um, Breed-specific exercises are fantastic as long as you're reading the dog that you actually have. Sometimes people get a little carried away and they go, well, I have this breed, he needs to know this, I have this lab, he has to know how to do this, he has to know how to retrieve, he has to have this drive or this pit bull, he needs this. At the end of the day, that's just a blueprint and a cheat sheet. Read the dog and, and, and know the breed and say, okay, he might be interested in, in this, 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 or this, let me check that out. Oh, cool, he has this type of drive, how do I work with that? At the end of the day, because a dog has drive, it does not mean that you cannot control that and learn how to use suppression in a, in a, in a good way as, as a beginning step to having an on-off switch, as a, as a beginning step to teach the dog that there is an alternative solution than just acting on impulse, right? Not as completion. There's a lot of trainers out there that are using suppression as completion. Dogs that are not social with other dogs that place 24-7, that's just like stage one or stage two. There's still a lot more uh, uh, to get to past that. That's very important that you know that. As far as breed specific, same thing. Like, my dog has a huge, 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 huge prey drive. Loves squirrels. He'll chase them all day. We spend, we spent so many years when he was a puppy teaching them you can't chase squirrels. You can't go after birds. You can't go after dogs that you want to attack. Can't go after dogs that you want to play with. Can't do this. Can't do that. What we did was he got his, his recall really, really solid. Got him really soft on the leash got us to be really relevant, working for his food, everything comes from me. Then what we do, got him remote collar trained, now he's a dog that, where we go in certain places and I can let him be a dog, I let him run, I let him chase deer, I let him chase squirrels, I let him be a dog, because I know I can call him back at any time that I want. And teaching him impulse control allows for this like bond, this connect, where he looks at you and he's like, hey, is it time? Like, is it cool for us to do this? Oh, not right now, cool, what should I be doing instead? And that's what you want, a dog that's asking, a dog that's saying, what time is it right now? You need to be the clock, and your dog needs to be looking at you to see what time it is. It's the first time I've used that, I think that's a good one. Um, 
Let's see what else. Elisha, what's up? Um, I know, don't feel like you've been a bug. You're not at all. We're always late on DBQ Tuesday. Uh, my wife makes fun of me, says it should be called DBQ Thursday. Um, and I think Andrew would agree. Today is Wednesday, though, so we're going to get this out tonight. Um, dear Blake, I have a one-year-old blue healer, Border Collie. Actually, I have two, but my bandit is starting to develop some OCD. He constantly stares at walls, trees, grounds, and everywhere for shadows and lights. It's really hard to distract him because... He is not toy or food motivated at the moment. Um, I think he suffers from anxiety. We take him out every day for exercise, and when we are lucky, sometimes he will run and play frisbee, but he gets distracted very easily by shadows, lights, mostly at home. Bandit is trained off-leash in response to basic commands, but only on his terms. That, that's, that, that's the deal breaker right there. Um, I have tried many alternatives with him, but nothing seems to work. A dog trainer here in upstate New York told me it would cost between four to eight grand. I need your thoughts. Okay. Um, let's start with, with the end there. Look the trainer up, right? Because I, I'll tell you right now, our, our board and train programs are very, very expensive, but we have the footage out there for you to see and go, wow, I want to spend this money on, on this person, right? There are a lot of people out there that are trying to charge these things, and you don't really see any fantastic work or you haven't heard anything fantastic or you haven't met with them, they're not cordial, cordial to you, they're not polite when you speak to them. You know, um, definitely do your research as far as price. You know, the world that we live in, more often than not, you get what you pay for. Um, you know, I, I can tell you right now, I don't have any tattoos. Hey, if I was ever going to get a tattoo, I'm probably not gonna pay the guy that says I'll do that for five bucks, I'm gonna pay the guy that says I'll do that for 500. I'm still gonna look them up but there's something about that that usually ends up, um, I guess, holding true, you know, when you see that. So as far as your guy, your blue healer, your dog doesn't know these commands. I, I gotta be straightforward with you. If he's doing it when it serves him or when he feels like it, your dog does not know these commands. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you to do, if your dog does not have food drive, um, that's the one thing you can actually create. The thing that you need to stop doing is stop free feeding your dog or stop feeding him twice a day from the food bowl. Food comes from you. You gotta start marker training. Go to episode nine where you see Andrew working Samson for the markers so you have an idea. We're always talking about that on Facebook. We just did a Periscope uh, episode earlier today which explained the markers. That's only up for 24 hours. Uh, Dream Come True Canine on Periscope. Check it out. It's gonna be gone tomorrow but we cover a little bit of the markers and we actually work this dog who has no food motivation right now at all. And I say, look at this is what it looks like now. You're going to start to see this toward the end, right? And that's really what you want to um, start working. That's, that's the one opportunity you have to work in your favor. Every dog has to eat. Every dog has to eat to survive. Every dog's going to be hungry. But if they get this whenever, you try to work the dog, he's not motivated. And you say, oh, well, here's the bowl. We'll try again tomorrow. Well, if he's getting all the food there, why is he going to be motivated the next day to do that, right? So in the beginning, this stuff has to come from you. And then you transfer that lifestyle, that earning lifestyle, that, that my choices matter lifestyle. If I do this, I get this. If I don't do this, I, I get this or I don't get this. And that starts to change your dog's drive. Um, as far as getting the recalls down, you got to use tools that are going to help you. A lot of people jump into remote collar stuff way too soon, teaching a dog what not to do rather than teaching a dog what to do. And before they even get into that, they're jumping into... Um, uh, not having a dog solid on leash pressure. Leash pressure is your friend. And I think we realize that more than any, anybody else because we live in the middle of New York City where everybody needs to have a, a dog that walks good on leash, um, at least in my opinion. Um, a lot of other places, you can kind of skip that. The dog's not so good on leash, but we never have them. Get solid and sensitive with leash pressure. Very, very important. That's going to be your segue into everything else. Let's see where else we are. Um, hi, Blake. When introducing the e-collar, in a recall, I occasionally find that after a few reps, the dog chooses to stick around the handler uh, rather than roam, which makes it a bit of a challenge to make the dog understand what is really required and what the exercise is about. Could this be a result of overstimulation? I'm making sure to keep the working levels low as, as low as possible. Otherwise, the dog shows no sign of stress or discomfort. Is there any way around this? Is it wrong to have a second person distract the dog or lure him away from the handler? just for the sake of exercise? This is a great, great question. Um, 
the end ask, is it wrong to have a second person? It's not if you're doing it nonchalantly, right? So you wanna start in an area. Like I can tell you right now, if I have a dog that's glued to me or a dog that's anxious, I'm not gonna start with recall, I'm gonna start with place exercises, right? And we actually separate that. So if I'm gonna teach place, I'm not gonna teach recall right away. I'm gonna teach a dog that feeling a sensation and going to that thing is what shuts it off, along with when you come off, that sensation comes on until you go back over there. And when I get that solid, and a dog understands that when he's gonna break, I say no button goes on and I walk toward him to back him up with spatial pressure or with leash as I do that. Um, imagine how confusing it could be if now I'm, I'm trying to recall him and when he feels sensation, I'm telling him to now come to me when it meant to back up. So that's why we keep that separate. Um, one thing you can do is you can start working him for his food where if he's holding a sit, holding a place and he knows that, now you're in a position to show him when it's okay to come to you. And if he's food motivated or he's not, you can teach that sensation almost subliminally without them realizing. You can do it where they go, oh, well, I was gonna make that choice for you anyway. I felt this, that happen and go off when I came to you. Another thing you can do is you can use that second person or you can use more of your environment, right? Like if you're in a grassy area or you're by a tree or you're in an area where dogs will, um, hey, where dogs will um, uh, pee and stuff, something that's gonna entice the dog away, not in a wild child state, but just get them a little bit where you can have loose leash pressure or slow them down and then call them, now you can start to do that. But you do need a dog that's disconnected from you. So you can use a second person, you can use um, a food bowl, but it, can, it shouldn't be back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, right? You want them to know it's okay to get away from you. If every time they get away from you, the second you do, you call them, and then they go away and then you call them and you go away and you call them, the dog's like, dude, I don't want to go away from you because this is getting old. So walk around a little, have it be a little loose, take your time with the recalls, do it a couple of times, don't overdo it, and you should find success with that, all right? Um, how are we on time, Andrew? We have uh, seven minutes left. We have seven minutes left, okay. All right, sorry, I just had like a little cough fest. So you'll notice Brody did not shrink. He, um, we just swapped out a different dog. This is our new guy, Bolt. A little bit of a nervous guy. He was described uh, by the owners as being a gremlin. Dog aggressive, gets into social environments and just goes absolutely ballistic, goes for their face. Couple things that are very, very important. A lot of people are talking about how do I get my dog social. I really, really genuinely think that a lot of people are rushing socialization. I think that, um, Shoot, you just reminded me, I gotta put this on uh, uh, airplane mode before the phone rings, yeah. Um, I really, really think that when people see me doing some socialization, I, I always see comments and then go, well, geez, my dog isn't that calm. Or, well, well, yeah, but my dog would be going crazy. If your dog is disrespecting you, and don't, don't take offense to that, but if your dog is that disrespectful, you're not at the point where, where you should be doing that yet. You need to be more relevant, right? So a couple things with this guy. People go, well, how do you know? Listen, at the end of the day, you're always gonna be taking somewhat of a risk, somewhat of, of, of uh, you know, a gamble. But for me, I, I, I place good bets, right? I already have a dog that is walking with other dogs in the pack. I already have a dog that is sitting on leash pressure. Of course, his leash pressure could be a little bit better, but he's sensitive, he's responding to it. I already have a dog that can actually hold a place around dogs that he has never met. So I'm bettering my odds. In fact, if I'm gonna take a gamble, I'm cheating because I already know that I'm at a certain level with my dog, right? So, well not with my dog, but with my client. That's where you need to be. You need to get there first. You can't just run in and, and start going crazy, it doesn't work that way. I mean, it might work, it's a 50-50 shot that your dog's gonna be all right, but it's 100% up to him. I'm not with those odds. So, a couple things that I'm gonna show you really, really quickly. These are dogs that we kinda know. Hold on, bud. Um, some dogs that I wanna look out for. Uh, he gets a little nervous with some new guys, so I'm gonna make sure that this guy's not being a pest. He's gonna be on leash with me. Um, this guy gets a little bit excited. He's just at the point now where he's past Brody's level of socialization where we're letting him roam a bit. So things that I gotta look out for, right? Um, I'm going to take his prong collar off. I'm soft with the leash. I'm already at that stage. 
And in the event that I get to a point where I do drop it, which is probably not gonna happen today, um, and he does go into play, I don't want dogs mouthing prong collars and stuff and, and running any risk. So we're gonna swap this out. I'm gonna make a little bit of, of a knot here. I guess you call this a figure eight knot. I don't know, I wasn't a Boy Scout, so I don't, I don't know these knots or anything like that. But I know that it holds, and it's easy to take out when you're done. This, just to kill time, or to make sure I'm not killing too much time, I'll put that under there. I'm gonna start moving. Okay, guys, right? Now, one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bust out this scary 50 Shades of Grey looking whip, not because I plan on whipping this guy, um, but I do want to create a little bit of curiosity and then be able to have Stretch Armstrong arms where I can create a bubble of security around this guy. So he knows, listen, I'm gonna put you in a situation where you are, um, Seamus, Seamus, let's go buddy. Duchess, call Duchess Andrew. Duchess. Duchess, come on girl. Come on girlfriend, let's go. She's like, are you sure I can come on place? Come on, good. So I'm gonna create this bubble, like check out Mickey right now, right? You watching, you watching that? So that might be enough, and I might do something like that. This is more for him. One, the dogs understand me. I'm already relevant with these guys, right? So now I can create a force field where I say, hey, bud, listen up, man. I am going to put you in a situation that you're nervous about. I understand that. I am going to put you in a situation where you normally do your own thing. But I assure you, when I put you in this situation, you're not going to have to make any of those calls. I'm going to do that for you. And the dog goes, Wait, really? Well, then what am I supposed to do? And what I tell him is, you get to just be a dog, right? So in the beginning, dogs are curious about him. He might not have any curiosity. The one thing that I know I have with him, and I'll show you this as I start to bring him in, I might actually bring him over to Mickey. Come on, buddy. Mickey. So Mickey's about to get into play with these guys. But we'll see, do I have, right now I don't have any curiosity, that's fine. I don't go, oh, what's, what the heck is the problem? What I do is I create, he's curious about that camera, what the heck is that, here's the soft, let's go. Good, and then pressure comes off, right? There's no dragging, there's no silliness, A little bit of smelling right here. Go ahead, Mix. <coughs> Mickey, come here. Mickey. So now he's like, why, why weren't you letting me smell this guy before, what's up? So this is all right, all good in the hood. That's soft, that's respectful. If I get a dog that's calmly smelling, not in your face, right here I call him out. That was face to face, it went really, really well. And then what I say is, hey bud, let's get you out of there and show you, now I'm gonna move my dog back, show you that in that situation where you're a little nervous and you're like, oh man, what happens next? You know that that's actually an option to walk away, to actually get called out. And when you do this enough, you start to get a dog that takes their own risk and takes their own gambles and says, you know what, normally I would go about this this way or I would handle it this way, but let me try to do something new because this has worked for me in the, in the past. So you take your time, you do this, you have a dog that responds for this, not for this, right? For this, and I know if I turn this way, I can get him going. I know if he gets out ahead of me, I can give a little bit of a tap, pressure comes off right there when I get that choice, and now he's learning, wow, when I'm with this guy, I feel all right. And that's no different than when I was growing up young and I walked through a bad neighborhood with my mom. I was young and there was probably nothing I could do, but I felt like I needed to protect my mom, right? Because my mom was a fox. My mom was a good looking, per uh, good, she still is, good looking woman. Um, but when I walked through the hood with my dad, I wasn't scared of anything. I just got to be a kid because everyone knew my dad, right? My dad plays sports with everybody, so I was with dad, I was chilling, right? Um, that's, so this is an interesting component right here. You're gonna see this here. Come on, let's go. The reason he got a little worked up is because they're playing a little bit rougher. Um, so check, out, check this out here. Right here, let's go. Good boy. I need to be able to have this relevance. What would be ideal is if I had more space, I'm a little bit limited but that's all right, right here again, come on. And I stay in this area, I move Mickey out of the way. I'm gonna come over on your left here, right here. Let's go, 
Good. I'm not even letting him get over there because I see the way he's like, oh, what's going on there? So I'm just keeping it simple. Hey, stay focused on me even when that happens. And the dog's like, even when that happens? Yeah, bud, even when that happens. Look at these guys. These are the same two dogs in that vi viral video. Shh. Hey, these are the same two dogs in that viral video where people were like, oh, well, they look like robots. I would never want robots. They ain't robots. They're just really well behaved. Shh. Hey. Now, I'm very mindful of the direction that my leash goes. It's not high and to the left or right, it's low and to the left or right. And that determines, that's, that's where I want his head to turn so that his body follows. If I use the leash this way, I want his head turning this way. Like this, pressure comes off. If I use it this way, I want you coming this way. If I'm gonna turn to the right, I'm gonna go this way and go wide so you understand what you need to do. And this is our very first socialization with him ever. This is a dog that attacks other dogs. And people were like, oh, well, it doesn't look like it. I, I've worked with tougher dogs. Listen, the dog is a nutcase, but we got to a certain point before we got here, right? This is not about like entertainment where I go, let's show you how nutty he is. Let's see what we can do. No, 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 no. Foundation, foundation, foundation. People aren't spending five grand for him to stay here if he wasn't a nut. You know what I mean? So like, these are the things that we're talking about where people go like, well, these dogs are so behaved. I don't believe they were like that. Follow the Facebook page, you'll see it. You know, a lot of times we get uh, uh, before videos. So here I'm gonna break this up because Mickey was being innocently curious, but it was spooking Dutch's a little bit. So I just used my extender arm and kind of moved and created this force field. And this is pretty much what we're talking about here. So that's a first, come on, socialization class. We're not gonna get too much into it. This for me is a successful socialization class, right? He got to experience this. Now we're gonna take him out. Tomorrow we push for a little bit more. We walk with more of a pack for a longer duration. We place for a longer period of time. He places while I work another dog for food. All of that is socialization, right? One step at a time, all right? I hope you guys get a lot from this. That is it, and um, I will see you guys next week.